Hello everyone and welcome back for chapter 19 of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Now if you can remember um, all of the guests went into a pink boat that was a big boiled sweet and they were going down the chocolate river and then they went up a pipe and they were going past all the different storerooms. Okay and chapter 19 is called the inventing room everlasting gobstoppers and hair toffee. Hair toffee, not sure about that. Anyway, let's see what happens. When Mr Wonka shouted stop the boat, the Oompa Loompas jammed their oars into the river and backed, backwatered furiously. The boat stopped. The Oompa Loompas guided the boat alongside the red door. On the door it said, inventing room, private, keep out. Mr Wonka took a key from his pocket and leaned over the side of the boat and put the key in the keyhole. This is the most important room in the entire factory, he said. All my most secret new inventions are cooking and simmering in here. Old Fickle Grubber would give his front teeth to be allowed inside just for three minutes. So would Prodnose and Slugworth and all the other rotten chocolate makers. But now listen to me. I want no messing about when you go in. No touching, no meddling and definitely no tasting. Is that agreed? Yes, yes, the children cried. We won't touch a thing. Up to now, Mr Wonka said, nobody else, not even an Oompa Loompa, has ever been allowed in here. He opened the door and stepped out of the boat into the room. The four children and their parents all scrambled after him. Don't touch, shouted Mr Wonka, and don't knock anything over. Charlie Bucket stared around the gigantic room in which he now found himself. The place was like a witch's kitchen. All about him, black metal pots were boiling and bubbling on huge stoves and kettles were hissing and pans were sizzling and strange iron machines were clanking and spluttering and there were pipes running all over the ceiling and walls and the whole place was filled with smoke and steam and delicious rich smells. And you can see a picture here of what the room looked like. And here is Mr Wonka, loving a peek in a fan. Mr Wonka himself had suddenly become even more excited than usual and anyone could see that this was the room he loved best of all. He was hopping about among the saucepans and the machines like a child among his Christmas presents, not knowing which thing to look at first. He lifted the lid from a huge pot and took a sniff. Then he rushed over and dipped a finger into the barrel of sticky yellow stuff and had a taste. Then he stipped, skipped across to one of the machines and turned half a dozen knobs this way and that. Then he peered anxiously through the glass door of a gigantic oven, rubbing his hands and cackling with delight at what he saw inside. Then he ran over to another machine, a small shiny affair that kept going put, 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 and every time it went put, a large green marble dropped out of it into a basket on the floor. At least it looked like a marble. Everlasting gobstoppers, cried Mr Wonka proudly. They're completely new. I'm inventing them for children who are given very little pocket money. You can put an everlasting gobstopper in your mouth and you can suck it and suck it and suck it and suck it and it will never get any smaller. It's like gum, cried Violet Beauregard. It's not like gum, Mr Wonka said. Gum is for chewing. And if you try chewing one of these gobstoppers here, you break your teeth off. And they never get any smaller. They never disappear. Never. At least, I don't think they do. There's one of them being tested this very moment in the tasting room next door. And Oompa Loompa is sucking it. He's been sucking it for very nearly a year now without stopping. And it's still as good as new. Now, over here, Mr Wonka went on, skipping excitedly across the room to the opposite wall. Over here, I'm inventing a completely new line of toffees. He stopped beside a large saucepan. The saucepan was full of thick, gooey, purplish treacle, boiling and bubbling. By standing on his toes, little Charlie could see just inside it. That's hair toffee, said Mr Wonka. You eat just one tiny bit of that and in exactly half an hour, a brand new, luscious, thick, silky, beautiful crop of hair will start growing out all over the top of your head. And a moustache and a beard. A beard, cried Veruca Salt. Who wants a beard, for heaven's sake? It would suit you very well, said Mr Wonka, but unfortunately the mixture's not quite right yet. 
I've got it too strong. It works too well. I tried it on an Oompa Loompa yesterday in the testing room and immediately a huge black beard started shooting out of his chin and the beard grew so fast that soon it was trailing all over the floor in a thick hairy carpet. It was growing faster than we could cut it. In the end, we had to use a lawnmower to keep it in check, but I'll, be, get, I'll get the mixture right soon. And when I do, when there'll be no excuse anymore for little boys and girls going about with bald heads. But Mr Wonka, said Mike TV, little boys and girls never do go about with... Don't argue, my dear child, please don't argue, cried Mr Wonka. It's such a waste of precious time. Now over here, if you'll all step this way, I'll show you something that I'm terrifically proud of. Oh, do be careful, don't knock anything over. Stand back. And that is the end of that chapter. Okay, don't forget, if you want to listen to any of the other chapters again, you can go back and listen to them at your leisure. Bye for now.